Hello fellow movie collectors, I'm going to make a quick video on my Wild East DVD collection. Now Wild East is uh, one of my all-time favorite cult companies. They're a company that's uh, very specialized. All of their DVD releases are limited to 1,000 units and um, once they are sold out, they are sold out for good and they are extremely hard to come by and if you do happen to find them on eBay once they're sold out, they go for a hundred dollars or more usually so um, I do have 36 of their 50 releases here and I'll start with my old, the oldest the oldest release I have which is spine number five is actually not a spaghetti western it's a euro crime film now Wild East uh, the majority of the releases are spaghetti westerns but they do have a few uh, euro crime uh, macaroni combat peplum releases here. And back this early release, uh, Wild East did black ca cases, chapter inserts of poster artwork. And what I love about Wild East is uh, they do put good extras on there. There's not a lot of extras because frankly most of the people involved in these films are either, most of them are dead and if they're not they're in Italy and don't speak uh, English so it's hard to get interviews with them. So. For an early release, even though it's not anamorphic, this is this is wonderful. Then I have spine number ten here. I used to have spine number. Oh, I this is when they started using clear cases, and they'd show their other releases here. Yeah, spine number nine used to be the oldest release I owned, Kill and Pray, but I sold that because it got re-released in a double feature here. And Pistoleros, and this is one of the weaker uh, spaghetti westerns they've released. Um, I do love the cover artwork, uh, co-president of Eric Mache of um, Wild East, he designs all, all the cover artwork for these DVDs and it's all very attractive and uh, he, uh, he always use a lot, utilizes original poster artwork which I like because I love the original poster artwork for Spaghetti Westerns. Then I have spine number 11, Ben and Charlie, a really, really entertaining comedy Spaghetti Western with uh, Giuliano Gemma and George Eastman. Um, out of print, very hard to come by, and expensive if you can. I'll show you the just there. Back. And then a very rare double feature, uh, spy number twelve, uh, Van Cleef double feature, Beyond the Law, and Grand Duel. Uh, goes for a lot of money. Uh, these transfers are actually stolen in a few, uh, like Mill Creek. Um, bargain sets, they stole the transfers from the Wild East discs, but don't, these are still the best quality you can get of these films, and it's well worth it. You can hunt it down for a good price. Dirty Outlaws, uh, spine number 14, uh, out of print, hard to come by. Uh, one of, uh, Quentin Tarantino's favorites. It's not a bad one at all. Uh, let's see, Taste of Killing, uh, spine number 16, uh, this, uh, I think a few of them ago, Charles Ambler started doing really big write-ups on the back with histories of the film, and really cool. This is from the director of Day of Anger, um, My Name is Nobody, and A Reason Lived, A Reason to Die, so, uh, out of print again, hard to come by. Then I have Reason to Live, Reason to Die, spine number 18, out of print, this is fully uncut, uh, wonderful release, James Coburn, Telly Savalas, Bud Spencer, how can you get better than that? It's a must-own Spaghetti Western, but it's out of print, hard to come by. And I have Fort Yuma Gold, uh, spine number 19, uh, you know, Giuliano Gemma, uh, a.k.a. Montgomery Wood, good Spaghetti Western. A um, bit more average than, like, A Reason to Live and Reason to Die, but it's still really enjoyable, out of print, again, hard to come by. Okay, we got Clint the Nevada Zoner double feature with There's a Noose Waiting for You, Trinity. That, of course, is not a sequel to the Trinity films. Uh, Clint the Nevada Zoner is better known as Clint the Stranger, and the other films better known as Return of Clint the Stranger. So this is, to make matters more confusing, it's actually, the story's actually a remake of the first film. So, yes, it's very, but, um, the Clint the Nevada Zoner, it's a good film, but it's more of an American type western. It's more modeled after, after American westerns. It's not as gritty or violent as uh, 
as a normal spaghetti western, but still a good one. Let's see. I love this title. Jamango! Dirty, gritty, definitely Fistful of Dollars inspired. Not a great one, but uh, um, enjoyable enough. There's a George Eastman double feature. And this is the first time Wild East broke their mold for cover art design for double features, which showed two different post arts. They kind of combined them here. Um, Hate Thy Neighbor and Django The Last Killer, of course, one of the many unofficial sequels to Django. Um, this one's sold out and goes for a lot of money. Um, apparently it's popular with fans, but I didn't think either film was that good. Um, Hate Thy Neighbor, uh, that Wild East must have got rights to a print that had uh, no title credits, so they had to make their own. That's the one and only time so far they've had to do that, so that was kind of on. And they got a Year of War double feature. They broke their molds by number 24. I love macaroni combat films. Both these have uh, Klaus Kinski. Really enjoyed these a lot. Another double feature here. The Forgotten Pistolero. The Unholy Four. As far as I know, this is the only Wild East DVD to ever get a second pressing. They sold out so fast, the first thousand copies, that they reprinted it. So... Yeah, and that's, there's a good reason, because these are both excellent spaghetti westerns, so. And we got three bullets for Ringo, uh, spine number 26, uh, very, very passable. This is one of their, one of the worst one, spaghetti westerns they've released, in my humble opinion, so. Kill em All and Come Back Alone, one of the must-own, most action-packed, excellent spaghetti westerns from director Enzo G. Costellari. Must-own, love the film, can't recommend it enough. It's by number 27. Double feature here. Uh, Payment in Blood, Red Blood, Yellow Gold. Spy number 29. Again, a must on. Payment Bloods and Enzo G. Costellari. Both are excellent westerns. So recommend that one. Long Ride from Hell. Uh, number, spy number 30. Uh, went out of print really fast because it's a Steve Reeves one and only spaghetti western. And he was popular, of course, for playing Hercules and the Peplums. And, uh, um, yeah, this is a, it's an alright western. It definitely, Steve Reeves is the main draw of it. Um, Code Red DVD later released a, a hair better edition, but this is definitely good enough for me. And then Don't Turn the Other Cheek, a.k.a. Long Live Your Death. Look at that cast. Franco, Nero, Eli Wallach, Lynn Redgrave. You can't go wrong. Excellent spaghetti western comedy with political overtones. So, and that's spine number 31. After that, you got spine number 32 of Killer Be Killed and Kill the Wicked. Uh, Kill the Wicked is actually, was later remade more popularly as Matalo. Um... Well, these did release Metallo on DVD, but sadly I don't have it. Um, these, I didn't really enjoy these much. These are definitely a weaker release by Wild East. And the, um, definitely ones I don't pop in that much. Then I got a Hunt Powers double feature here, spine number 33, which includes Denmed, Don't Bake Shadows, and One Damn Day at Dawn, Django Meets Sartana. Horrible, horrible westerns. They're enjoyable for that fact. They're, I forget his name, they're directed by the guy that's known as the Ed Wood of Spaghetti Western, so if that tells you anything, yeah, these are bad, badly made, but they're, they're enjoyable enough for bad Westerns. Then I have Volume 2 of the Eurocrime Collection, uh, Franco Nero, Martin Balsam, in uh, Confessions of a Police Captain, and the Spanish film, Summertime Killer. Um, excellent release. Um, most of the time, Double Features, uh, Wild East releases on a single-sided dual-layer disc, but for some reason they put this one on a double-sided disc, so. But that's, again, spy number 34. Spy number 35, Tequila Joe, and A Hole Between the Eyes. Uh, they were very average westerns here. Uh, George Hilton, Hilton Double Bill, Full House for the Devil, The Moment to Kill, spy number 36. Great release, Moment to Kill, personal favorite of mine. I highly recommend hunting this one down. Definitely. And quickly, another Eurocrime double feature, I Am the Law and Mafia. These are more politically charged Eurocrime films, so there's not a lot of action like, you know, Rome Arm to the Teeth, but they are excellent films. And, uh, Spy number 37, uh, great release here. 
Arizona Colt double feature uh, with Arizona Colt and Arizona Colt Hired Gun, an official sequel, believe it or not, that's not an unofficial one. And uh, this is a re-release of The Man From Nowhere, another title it's from, that Wild East released earlier in its catalog. Excellent films, must own, get it if you can. Uh, let's see, spy number 39, this is a Peter Lee Lawrence double feature of Hands Up, Dead Man, You're Under Arrest, odd title, and Revenge of the Resurrected. Pretty average westerns, but very entertaining. It can be done, amigo! Uh, spy number uh, 40. Uh, ex, uh, very enjoyable spaghetti western comedy. It was better than I thought it would be, because usually I'm not that big on spaghetti western comedy, so... Um, this was really cheap. It was only like 10 bucks, which is much cheaper than the average uh, Wild East DVD. So. Uh, Dead Men Don't Count and Kill and Pray, spy number 41. Must own. You have to own this if you're a Spaghetti Western fan, because these are two of the best the genre has to offer. Kill and Pray, again, was released earlier in the catalog, got re released. That's why I sold my older version. So, yeah, very excellent. The long awaited. Death Rides a Horse, the one and only widescreen release for America. Amazing DVD release, amazing film, must own. Spine number 42. Another Peter Lee Lawrence double feature, spine number 44. Uh, let's see, Killer Caliber 32, Killer Adios. Um, this was in the making for about three years. Apparently, a while these had a lot of problems with the negatives while trying to transfer it, so it was worth the wait. Uh, very entertaining spaghetti westerns there. I got A Place Called Glory, which is actually just a Spanish western. It's not even an Italian one. And then The Road to Fort Alamo, which is a Mario Bava spaghetti western. And if you've seen his spaghetti westerns, you know that's not the genre he's best at. Because he's good at horror, but not so much at spaghetti westerns. So that's only for the most hardcore Mario Bava fans. A Sartana double feature. We have Sartanas here. Uh, trade Your Pistol for a Coffin, which is the fifth and final entry into the official Sartana series, and then an uh, unofficial sequel here, Django Against Sartana. Excellent. Uh, Sartana's here, excellent. So the Sartana films are just amazing. I hope Wild East gets off um, and uh, releases, uh, re-releases the first film and then releases the other sequels as well, so that was a very good one. Then here's one that's not part of the Spaghetti Western collection, but it does have a Spaghetti Western in it called Alive or Preferably Dead, and a Euro spy film, um, and the, the genre inspired by the James Bond films, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, both of them starring Giuliano Gemma. Freaking awesome. I loved these films. Very enjoyable. Um, and I think people will probably pass it up because there's a lot of comedy to them, but man, these are really entertaining. Double feature of Reverend Colt and Vengeance is a Colt 45, uh, both starring uh, Guy Madison. Uh, Reverend Colt, of course, is the highlight of this collection. That was very enjoyable. Vengeance is a Colt 45, very, very, very average spaghetti western. So, yeah, but uh, still another excellent uh, double feature. I for Sorry, I've been forgetting to do the spy numbers, uh, spy number 48 on that one. This one I was super excited for, Lucio Fucci's. The Brute and the Beast, starring Franco Nero and George Hilton. How could you go wrong with that triumvirate? That is like a holy trinity for spaghetti western films. Uh, also known as Massacre Time, this is the only time it's been released in widescreen in America. Other versions are full frame VHS transfers. Freaking awesome. Spy number uh, 49. Amazing. You have to own this one. And last but not least, El Rojo. Um, very, very average spaghetti western, but uh, Wild East tried to make up for this by including the 2011 Los Angeles Spaghetti Western Film Festival, which is like a, a question and answer session with many of the surviving stars of the genre. So for that, it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, the, the western's all right. It's enjoyable, but it's pretty average. But that's the last one I own of the 36 Wild East releases. And uh, again... One of my all-time favorite companies, and if you're a Spaghetti Western fan and you've never heard of Wild East, look them up and hunt them down because they're worth collecting. All right, peace out.